Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today I'm going to show you how to reinstall the head on our 2003 Honda Rancher 350. Pretty simple to do. Let me go grab a couple of tools and I'll show you how to get it done. All right, before we get started, listen, this job is not going to be that scary. So I'm only going to give it a skill level two. But you do need to pay attention of what you're doing as we go through the process. As far as the tools, let's go through some of those. Basically, you just need a Phillips and a flathead. As far as your wrenches, just need a 10, a 12, and a 14. Then you're going to need a couple of decent uh, ratchets, uh, 3 8 and a quarter inch, and then various extensions. Makes your life a lot easier. On the, uh, the socket side, it's basically a range in between 8 up to 14. But then you're also going to need a, uh, one for your spark plug. Beyond that, just need a 6 millimeter Allen. To finish things off, get yourself a decent uh, torque wrench because you do not want to be off when you're you know, torquing these heads and the, uh, the cylinder back down. All right, as far as the parts, if you would reference our parts diagrams, it'll really be a great exploded you know, picture of how everything is going to go back together. So if you're a little unsure, reference those drawings, then it'll, it'll be clear to you. So once you've got your tools and your parts together, we can head on over there and get started. All right, let's start off by getting our dowels in place. This one toward the front on the left and then the back right. All right, and we've already got the piston at top dead center, so we're good to go there. Next, we just need to lay in our gasket. You want the surfaces to be completely clean, and this little section right here, you want it facing toward the back of the machine because this will signify that this is the top. All right, now we can go ahead and set the, uh, the head in place. It takes a little bit for it to wiggle down on top of those dowels. Let's go ahead and get our push rods in. Let's make sure they go back in clean. And then a couple more dowels. Get our main nuts back in there and washers. I'm going to get the right ones that came out of there because I'm sure like mine, the, uh, the ones on the outside like yours are dirty. So. Make sure you put the right ones back on the inside, along with the acorn nuts. We've got a retainer bolt that goes here, and then the holder up top. All right, let's start uh, doing the mains first. We're going to do it in a crisscross pattern, and they're 29 foot-pounds. This one on the back side gets 22 foot-pounds. All right, last is that rocker arm retaining bolt, and it gets 5 foot-pounds. All right, let's go ahead and get in these other two uh, head bolts on the far side. They're only 10 millimeter, so they should be the same uh, 5.1 foot-pounds. All right, let's go ahead and get our valve cover on. All right, you need to make sure that this little rubber O-ring is still in place. Let's go ahead and pop her on. Get these snug down. Remember, this is aluminum, so don't overdo it. Since we're right at it, let's go ahead and put in our new spark plug. That'll pretty much uh, close up the engine. And we're going to torque it to 13 foot-pounds. Next, let's go ahead and get in that upper motor mount bracket. Some advice for you tighten down any of those. Just put them in hand tight so you can move them around. It makes it a lot easier to line up. Next, let's go ahead and get our intake boot mounted up. This little section right here with the notch, that needs to point toward me. Let's go ahead and put our new uh, exhaust gasket in place. All right, let's see if we can get that exhaust wiggle back on there. See if we remember the funky way this thing came out of here. I'm sure there's a guy somewhere that can do this with his eyes closed. <laughs> oh, it's not that guy. All right, let's get those uh, bolts started. And I don't want to tighten them down until I actually get the, uh, the muffler on because I want it all seat together correctly. If I tighten these with it at the wrong angle, that ain't going to work out very well. So let's just get those up there started. Then we'll come back later and tighten them down once we get the, uh, the muffler on. Now we can go ahead and start tightening things down. We'll go ahead and do the uh, mounting bolts first. Then I'm going to go up front and do the exhaust flange. 
And keep in mind, we've got a new gasket in there. So you're gonna have to go back and forth from side to side until it bottoms out because it's compressing it down to pretty much flat like the one that came out. All right, I think we've pretty much got it now. Let's go ahead and get our little fuel plate back in place. Because eventually that shutoff valve is gonna go through here. All right, let's start getting this uh, fuel system back together. Starts off by just getting this cover back in. There's just a couple of push pins all the way up front. You want to put the, the white plastic under these two other pieces right here. The rest of it just kind of floats in place for the most part. Route all our cable and hoses back through these um, zip ties, if you want to call them that. Next, let's go ahead and get our carburetor mounted up. Let's start with the throttle cable. Just put it through this slot, bring it around the cam gear, making sure it's in the groove. Drop it down in that slot, thread it down. Then you want to check your play. I want just a little bit in there. That looks good. And tighten your pinch bolt right there. Bring down that protective cap. Then we'll put on this cover. It has that little edge on the bottom. It goes in there. And then just one Phillips up toward the top. Let's go ahead and bring our choke cable around. Make sure it's straight. Tighten it lightly. Now, let's go ahead and put it on the intake and tighten up that intake clamp. Now, if you're needing some more details about the carburetor, why don't you reference our carburetor rebuild for this particular unit? Now, there is an electrical connection. It's actually for the float bowl heater that we need to plug back in. All right, let's go ahead and bring our fuel tank back in. There's two 10 millimeters up front and just that one in the back at the center. Go and get our fuel line back on. Now, let's go ahead and get those fuel tank uh, mounting bolts tightened down. All right, next, let's go ahead and get our intake tube in place. Basically just lays in here, and then there's just a single plastic rivet that goes right here. Route this little vent hose, and it just sets right in there. All right, let's go ahead and get our air box in place. And feed in our intake tube, and then we're going to fish it up on the, uh, on the carburetor intake at pretty much the same time. Bring our clamps around where you can get to them easy from up top. And then get your vent hose. Don't forget your clamp. Reach around and get that one last 10 millimeter for the air box mount. Next, let's get that plug back in place with the flywheel to where you can find top dead center. Put it back on our little uh, petcock valve extension. Then it's just got a Phillips up inside there. And with that, go ahead and uh, turn it on. And let's go ahead and pop the battery in. All right, we've got her together enough to where we can uh, make sure it starts. So. Let's give it a whirl. Choke out. Well, all right, guys, that's sounding pretty promising. The only thing left now is just to put a few pieces of plastic back on in the seat and then take it out and break it in carefully because it's pretty much a new engine up top. So we want to give it time, get everything get seated in, make sure those, uh, those rings seat like they're supposed to. Well, listen, if you need any of the parts that we use to do this, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Till next time, we just want to say thanks for watching.